let's step back uh, a little bit and look at Mars and lakes on Mars. Just going back to your PhD and before, and maybe today, what do we understand about life on Mars? What do we understand about lakes on Mars? Is there water on Mars? What do we understand about the conditions from 4 billion years ago on Mars? Well, we've gone a long way. Remember from, from the Viking where we had no resolution. Well, we had a little bit more resolution with than with mariners. What did you think at that time? Sorry to interrupt. It just, was, just it, take us back to that mindset. It, it was really the exploration, like the, your first look at a planet. You have to remember that the first mission that successfully snapped some pictures of Mars was Mariner 4. And then everybody at that time was still under the spell of you know, at Wells and and the idea that Mars looked with telescope so similar to the Earth. Polar caps, we could see them with a telescope and we knew it had season. The actual tilt is pretty much the same as the one for Earth. So when Mariner 4 left, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people thought that we were city crystal cities and domes and stuff, <laughs> that another civilization might have evolved in parallel to us in the solar system. And of course, when the first images came back and Mars looked with that kind of resolution it had, uh, like the moon, yeah. it was a huge disappointment. Then Mariner 9 uh, came, and that changed everything. There, is, there was a little bit of drama because... Mars started the, one of the biggest dust storm it ever experienced. And so for three months, we had an orbiter circling around Mars and not seeing anything. But then when the dust cleared, all of a sudden we started discovering volcanoes, valleys, ancient channels, dune fields, polar caps. And see, when I'm talking to you, I don't need to invent any words to describe Mars. And although the myth of extraterrestrial civilization on Mars was gone, all of a sudden, the imagination of the scientists started to pick up because right away we were seeing something that was familiar that we could describe. So right away, Viking was put on the fast track and the idea was, so Mars looks so much like Earth could have been, although it's arid and there is little atmosphere, etc. Could there be life? And of course, behind this, at the time, there were people like uh, Klein and Sagan, Carl Sagan, uh, just you know, uh, thinking about how can we test the idea of biology of life on Mars. So this is what Viking did. But of course, at the time when the two landers arrived on Mars. We didn't have the context of the geology of the environment. We didn't have much data at all. So the data that Viking sent back was very confusing. Some people still think today that we discovered life on Mars uh, at the time because some of the experiments turned out to show a strange signal. Mm -hmm. But most of the community think that it can be explained by chemical reaction that we see today. So it was so confusing that NASA decided to say, okay, if we want to be serious about looking for life on Mars, we have to understand the environment because life and environment co-evolve. So as cause or effect, a planet is going to give you the physical chemical environment for life to happen. These are the boundaries. But once life is here, is going to change everything. Uh, one of the um, biggest impact of life was to inject oxygen into the atmosphere of the Earth three, uh, two billion years ago. And that changed everything, including our signature in space. So there is this coevolution. So if you want to understand one, you have to remove the other from the equation. It's kind of a two unknown uh, equation. So even though oxygen changes our signature today, what if all life on Earth died and now we fast forward a billion years? What would be the traces left? It, so the question I'm trying to ask is, if life had existed on Mars, what would be the signs we would look for? That's a very good question. The thing is that if you draw the parallel with Earth, it took 82% of Earth history, uh, geological history, to go from very simple life, microbial life, to complexity. And when I'm saying complexity, I'm not even talking about us. I'm talking about animals. So 
Mars is smaller, lost its magnetic field very fast and lost its atmosphere very fast. Life also appeared on Earth very fast. So the condition being quite similar at that time between the Earth and Mars, let's assume for a moment that life appeared on Mars, it would have been simple life when conditions started to degrade, which was less than a billion years after the planet had formed. So everything at the surface would have disappeared, except maybe for morphological traces of the interaction between life and its environment. So on Earth, the best example are what we call stromatolites. These are rock formation that are built by microbes. So we know that, we, we, we know how to recognize them. You could have chemical traces as well. There is some interesting question marks right now about carbon isotopes uh, at Gale uh, Crater because we found an abundance of uh, C12, which normally is used by life on Earth, but it can produce, be produced by other things. So it's not that it's a real biosignature in itself, but it's intriguing. We have now the C12 and we have methane. But uh, going back, it's a time on Mars 3.5 billion years ago where you have lots of destructions, where you have lots of impact cratering, etc. So, But we still have very old rocks that are that survive from that time. So these are good uh, good places. That's why we're sending the rovers in those places, ancient lakes and impact craters, and and places where you have very old rocks. So when you say ancient lakes and impact craters, the simple question: so impact crater is a crater created by a giant rock hitting the planet. And yes, a big rock that can be metal or rock, or it can be a comet as well, mostly ice. So is that good for life or bad for life? <laughs> for both. creating life and, both. and destroying life? Both, it's actually both. Um, interestingly enough, the building blocks of life, the bricks, the stuff we are made of, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and phosphorus, they were included on our planet, they were built in just because our planet is made of these kind of rocks, asteroids and comets coming together by what we call accretion. So they were built in. When an asteroid comes, there is a lot of destruction going on. But at the same time, those rocks, they bring with them those bricks of life and they create lots of energy. And if the environment around is favorable, you might possibly be have some seeding going on. That's one of the aspects of what we call panspermia, uh, which is the fact that comets and asteroids have the building blocks of life embedded in them, and that given favorable condition, they might be able to seed planets. This is a theory. 